Welcome back everybody to work in energy AP physics C where you're going to do some multiple choice questions today this one all right let's go a man lifts a mass m at a constant speed to a height h in a time t how much work is done by the weightlifter on the mass so what we should see is we have this mass we're lifting this up with a constant velocity meaning acceleration is zero force of gravity going down, force applied, and then this is going up a certain distance, h. What we should know is the force applied is going to be the same as the force of gravity, so that means the work is going to be the same as the force applied, which is mass times gravity. The distance it's going to go is d, and cosine of 0 is just 1, so we have uh, this d is equal to h, so work is equal to mass times gravity times height. Okay, let's look at example 42. On top of a building of height h, a ball of mass m is thrown downward with the initial speed v initial. What is the speed of the ball before it strikes the ground? Ignore air resistance. So let's try to look at this problem here. We have a ball being thrown down, initial velocity, it has a height of h, and we're looking for the speed down here. Okay, so let's think about everything we know at the beginning and then everything we know at the end. So at the very beginning, we have a potential energy, the mass times gravity times the height, plus it also has a velocity, so there's kinetic energy. One has mv initial squared. And at the end, we only have the kinetic energy, one half mv final squared. And we're trying to isolate to find this v initial. One thing we should know is this m cancels out. We should know this 2 goes to the other side, so it's going to be 2gh plus 2 cancels out with the 1 half v initial squared is equal to v final squared. Get rid of that v final by making this square root, and we get this as the answer. 2gh plus v initial squared, square root of that. Okay? Uh, so then we see that d is the correct answer. Moving on. Okay, let's look at example 43. A force supplies an average power of 8 watts to a box. If the box has an average speed of 4 meters per second, and the force acts in the same direction as the motion of the box, the magnitude of the force is. Okay, so this is a little bit tricky. Whenever you see something like average speed and you see power, you guys should be thinking about the formula power is equal to force times velocity. Remember, this derives from power, which is equal to work, force times distance uh, divided by time, and this d over t changes to v. Okay, so we know power is equal to force times velocity. Power is equal to 8. Force is what we're looking for. Velocity is 4, meaning that the force should be 2 newtons. Moving on. A student throws, a, throws upward at a height of 15 meters. The ball has potential energy of 60 joules and is moving upward with a kinetic energy of 40 joules. What is the maximum height achieved by the ball? Okay, so let's kind of draw this scenario. We have a ball thrown. We're looking for the maximum height. Okay. Another thing we should know is when the ball is 15 meters up, it has uh, 60 joules of potential energy, and it has 40 joules of kinetic energy Okay, over here. What we should know at the very top is the gravitational potential energy is 100, Okay, because it's gonna, all the kinetic energy is going to turn to gravitational potential energy. So if we look at this, mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final. At the very beginning, we have 60 joules of um, uh, potential energy and uh, 40 joules of kinetic energy at this point right here. And then at the very end, all of that is going to turn into the mass times gravity, 10 times the height of this. So we're looking for what this is going to be, uh, what this height is going to be. Oh, before that, I guess I should find what the mass is. So we know... Uh, 60 joules here. So UG is equal to 60, which is equal to the mass, which we're looking for, gravity 10, and the height, which is 15. So the mass is going to equal uh, 60 divided by 150, which is 0 0.4 kilograms. Okay, so then it was going to be 100 is equal to 0.4, gravity 10, and then H is what we're looking for. 100 divided by 
four is equal to 25 meters. Okay. Moving on. Okay, let's look at example 45. A person pushes a box across a rough floor with a constant speed of one meter per second. The box has a mass of 50 kilograms and the coefficient of friction is 0.2. The power supplied by the student on the box is blank. So whenever you see this speed thingy over here, uh, constant speed, I should say, you should know that most likely we're going to use this formula. Power is equal to force times velocity. Uh, but let's try to figure this out. So let's first draw a free body diagram. We have force of gravity, force normal, force applied, and force of friction. Something we should know is that the force applied and the force of friction are going to be the same because it's moving with a constant speed. So let's figure out what this force of friction is. It's equal to the normal force, which is 50 times 10, so 500, times the coefficient of friction, which is 0.2. Do a little bit of calculations. This is equal to 100 newtons. So we know force of friction is 100. Force applied is 100. So now we have power is equal to the force applied, 100, times the velocity, 1, and we get 100 watts. 100 what? Okay, moving on, sorry. A spring gun with a con the spring constant K launches a ball of mass M off a cliff of height H. If the velocity of the ball right before it hits the ground is V, how much was the spring compressed? Okay, so let's look at this. So the spring can be oriented in any way, but let's say it's oriented like this. So this is the ball. It launches this thing. It falls. Over here, it has a speed of V. So let's think about this. Mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final. We know at the very beginning, there's going to be uh, elastic potential energy, 1 half kx squared. And there's also going to be a gravitational potential energy. It has a height h. Plus mgh is equal to, and at the end, there's only going to be kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. Okay, so we're looking for how much the spring was uh, compressed k. So I'm going to just do, I'm going to bring kx squared is equal to 1 half mv squared. And I'm going to bring this to the other side, minus mgh. And then I'm going to uh, divide by si both sides by 1 half kx. So then I have x squared is equal to 2. So that cancels out mv squared minus 2 mgh. And then I could get rid of this uh, squared and put a square root here. And then this is our answer here. mv squared, blah, blah, blah. oops, I forgot the k. Divide by k, put the k onto the other side. Okay, And then we see that our answer is e. All right, uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys, and that's the rest of this chapter. Hope you guys learned a lot, and I'll see you in the next chapter with momentum.